Joining us now is Rena Shaw. She is a Republican strategist and political commentator based in Washington, D.C. And Rena, Donald Trump wasting no time attacking the vice president, Kamala Harris, taking aim at her intelligence, calling her crazy. My question is, how will that play with, with female voters? Well, with voters like me, Dell, you already know. I've been a longtime affiliated member of the Republican Party, voted Republican my entire life, but then I crossed over to vote for Biden in 2020. And I think what we hear out of Donald Trump's mouth does turn off a number of American women that are right of center or independently minded and affiliated. So I think the Trump team should be careful about how he operates moving forward. Simply adding J.D. Vance to the ticket doesn't help anything if the former president continues to use rhetoric that is not only hateful but divisive and doesn't speak to the many problems that our nation faces. I want to hear about solutions and I want to hear some respectful talk. He now has a new challenger and he's got to face the moment in a different way in order to get me back into the fold. Already I've made my decision that I will be voting against President Trump. Uh, so I'm also unique in that way that I need to be brought into the fold by the Democrats. And those are live images, by the way, coming from Joint Base Andrews right now, the vice president preparing to leave Washington, D.C., heading to Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, where she will meet with the president of the United States and also campaign staff. Um, but as we watch her board the plane, Rena, question, there is that debate coming up in September. Will Donald Trump debate her? You know, on the one hand, he looks uh, like he's continuing his grand old tradition of uh, skirting debates like he did all last fall against all those people who stood up to challenge him from the Republican Party. And he won against them all without once ever stepping foot on a debate stage with them. So in, in the, on one hand, I think that, you know, he could use that same strategy. But on the other, I do see that he would be better served to, again, meet Kamala Harris where she's at, which will be a debate stage. She wants to debate. And, and really, uh, you know, have that substantive conversation on the issues, attack her at her vulnerabilities, as many Republicans, of course, are already tweeting about their, you know, knocking Kamala Harris's record in California, not only as AG, as a prosecutor, and also as a senator from California. So I think it's a, it would be a unique opportunity for both of them to show the American public why they're more deserving on the issues. Rena, with so many issues, I want to go back to something you said um, a moment ago. So many issues on the ballot con concerning women, especially abortion. Will women now defy right. party when it comes to this election? My sense is that they will. You know, abortion has, has been such a galvanizing issue. Uh, after Roe was overturned just two years ago, the Dobbs decision has made a number of women, not just of reproductive age, of which there are 58 million uh, women across the country that are of reproductive age. Uh, but I would, I would just say, this is the type of issue that has changed the lives of many American women, that, that stark reality that we no longer really have bodily autonomy in the case that we needed to access reproductive care. And the uh, Republicans with draconian bans in states like Arizona and Florida have extended to, into territories such as inter, uh, in vitro fertilization, wanting to ban that. I really do think the best place we can look to and why Democrats have an advantage is in places like Kansas and Ohio when abortion was on the ballot as a ballot measure, you had women cross over and help support the Democrats with the issue of abortion on the ballot. I think women, American women, have shown that they want our reproductive rights and access enshrined. We wanted it codified, Roe versus Wade. It was not. And so um, Republicans have a lot to lose. Rena, um, Vice President Harris identifies herself as both black and South Asian America. Her father was a Jamaican immigrant. Her mother was an immigrant from India. I'm curious, mispronouncing her name, it is Kamala Harris, but there are several attempts on the Republican side to call her anything but Kamala Harris. Uh, is that a good strategy? Well, I also am of South Asian descent. Uh, both parents of mine hail from India ancestrally. I was born and raised in southern West Virginia and very proudly with my heritage. I grew up with my grandparents and my paternal grandmother was named Gamla and she pronounced it just like I did. And so the name, uh, there are, you know, a couple different ways. I, I am bilingual. Actually, I'm trilingual. But because I do speak Hindi, I tend to pronounce it a little differently. And also English is my main language. 
I would I say all this to say I, I I think some Republicans yes are being just crass rude and if we want to call it what it is racist but I do think some people do innocently mispronounce her name I myself have been corrected sometimes in interviews where I accidentally pronounced her name the way she does not I pronounce it my like my my grandmother who I grew up in the home with so I would just say let's let's give people a little bit of a break uh, sometimes I get called Rhina instead of Rena you know, it's just a, it's it's the world we live in. Um, but I, I do think anybody trying to be racist, we can see right through it. And it's absolutely wrong. And we should call it out when we see it. Rena, as you know, um, the northern Virginia suburbs, that is the largest, uh, the South Asian uh, population is the largest minority population in northern Virginia. Is that the sleeping political giant in states like Virginia and other states where there is a growing diversification of the electorate? Well, Northern Virginia is very unique in, in many ways because of the diversity, right? And we do tend to think of South Asian American voters as a monolith. We think to, we tend to just paint Asian American voters uh, with a broad brush. But I, I would just caution people to think that, um, you know, Kamala Harris has this locked up with with the South Asian uh, American segment of the electorate. You know, these these are people that are also complex. They do come to this country with different desires. But at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. Uh, safety, security, the ability to grow our lives, both uh, socially and economically. So that includes our bank accounts. But we also want more promise for our children, just like Kamala Harris got from her own parents. The ability and the opportunity to move ahead in life. She is our nation's most accomplished vice president and I never supported her in the past um, and I'm I still have not officially uh, expressed my support anywhere I, I do think she deserves though all of our admiration for having ascended to new heights uh, both academically and professionally and I think a lot of people out there are feeling really encouraged today with the many endorsements she's getting from across uh, the Democratic Party governors across the country as well as state delegations pledging their Democrat uh, their delegates and then members of Congress who've been her colleagues as well I think it does show people that this is a serious party but what will the Asian American segment of um, voters do I I'm too afraid to paint with a broad brush and especially here in Northern Virginia we know it is solidly blue uh, but let's just see what happens across the country because, because again we have those seven swingy states as we call them that are going to determine the outcome of the election Republican strategist and political commentator Rena Shaw. Rena, thanks for being with us. Dell, thank you so much. You got it. By the way, we should point out Minnesota Congressman Dean Phillips doesn't think the Democratic Party should anoint the Vice President Kamala Harris without a competition. Phillips challenged Biden.